Vote counting underway. INEX suspends exercise in some constituencies as polling units over in irregularities. Escalating cost of grains leave many Nigerians dissatisfied. ISWAP fighters raid Borno police station, gunned down officers. And on the international scene, dozens killed as Israel attacks on Rafa intensifies. Hey, thanks for joining us on the news hour on Trust TV. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Here's the news in full. The sorting and counting of votes is still ongoing in several polling units where rerun elections were held on Saturday in Plateau State. The Electoral Commissioner, the Electoral Commission rather, is overseeing elections for the Plateau North Senatorial District and Bassa, Joss Federal constituency, prompted by the nullification of Senator Simon Mwadkwan and Representative Musa Agas election. Trust TV's Adu Musa completes the report. It's 8, 99, Vote counting has been initiated at various polling units in Garbatoho Ward, just no local government area of the state. The counting process commenced at 3 p.m preceding the arrival of agents from all participating political parties after voting concluded at some of the polling units. INEC is conducting court order read-on election for the Plateau North Senatorial District and Just North Basa Federal Constituency. We are more than 614,000 voters are expected to exercise their franchise. I have been speaking to uh, some of the voters at different polling units and this is what they have to say. We do the election very peacefully. The election very, very peacefully. We do it very well. We don't have any problem for the election. And uh, we are we are praying for the who we vote. We pray for them to success for this election. And uh, we want to thank God the exercise is going on well. The people are coming out to cast their votes. And uh, the ANEC uh, official, they arrive here early. No any disruption, no any anything going wrong and uh, you can see you can see people around now people are still coming to cast their votes for their candidate we are happy with the election because many people have come out to vote at this unit we thank god for that we pray that the winner will remember us when he gets to the office voter apathy and late arrival of INEC officials and election materials have characterized the Plateau North Senatorial District and Basa does not rerun elections in the state. Adon Musa, Trust TV News, just. And voting has ended across six local government areas of Kano, where a state assembly rerun election was conducted. Our Trust TV's correspondent Idris Jabrin reports that the exercise was peaceful, with no reports of violence or breakdown of law and order at the time of voting. His report. Voters in Kura, Garumala, Tofa, Rimungadu, Kunchi, and Sanyawa local government areas of Kano State turned out to re elect their state assembly members whose previous election was cancelled by the election tribunal and the verdict upheld by the Court of Appeal. You see, we came out here as early as eight, and the electoral materials were delivered in time. And as you can see, we are conducting our election peacefully. In these places, there is no problem so far. We are doing our election. The people of Kura town are highly enfranchised uh, and uh, they are exercising their franchise. And uh, we see the real democracy in the process. And people are coming en mass to come and cast their votes to their own choice. The election was generally peaceful in most areas visited as voters were seen conducting themselves in an orderly manner. According to voters in some polling unit, electoral materials were delivered as early as 7 a.m. while voting commenced as exactly 8 a.m. and that no disruption was recorded throughout the process. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I have just voted and uh, we thank God that everything is going on smoothly. There was no any problem so far. And I believe that uh, at the end of the day, 
the Independent National Electoral Commission will announce who the winner is going to be. Everybody that is eligible for election is coming to cast his vote as per his uh, constitutional right. So we thank God now things are coming back to order. Democracy is going to be established in Kano and in all 44 local government in Kano state. Anybody, even if you are voting NMPP, if you are voting APC, you are free to vote. Nobody will harass you, nobody will do anything for you. A rerun was ordered in six local government areas covering three state assembly constituencies by the tribunal, following some irregularities during the March 18, 2023 elections. Voters across the affected local government are now expecting results declaration from the electoral umpire. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kanu. At a miss high security and participating polling units of Kaduna State, a rerun election has been conducted as voters express satisfaction with the peaceful atmosphere. Trust TV's Bello Musa, who closely monitored the election, reports a significant turnout of voters for the rerun exercise. I was a little bit late uh, coming here, but uh, I think I came here some few minutes after eight, and I met uh, everything has put in place. So I suggest maybe those things are there before it or exactly it. I came here early, but I met people here. I have been on the queue for an hour now. I am praying for peaceful election because I live here and I don't want rancor in our community. The experience I have since I have been here since around 8 o'clock, to monitor this um, the election going on and to the glory of God everything has been going on fine though there are some issues here and there some people have come they're trying to buy some vote from for their own um, for their own candidate but glory be to God we we're able to calm it down I, I am praying for a peaceful election whoever emerges we will accept it in good faith Electoral officials at the polling unit also share the challenges faced during the process. The only challenge we have is uh, the challenge with uh, Tom Print, those that we can't have their official uh, verification. So we have uh, uh, some difficulties with their Tom Print uh, verification. As you can see, you have gone round and see we don't have any we don't have any challenge here. We're talking about um, accreditation in some places. There could be facial recognition may not be there or thumb, a finger print. No, there is none yeah. here. If you can see, if you maybe, I think you have must have gone around and uh, or you have waited here for some time and see. There is no any challenge here. The beavers is moving fast and uh, we didn't have any challenge here. Okay. While urging the electoral umpire to ensure a credible election, voters appeal to the deploy security forces to maintain neutrality. I am seeing it. This is the first time in the history of television. One polling unit that is supposed to go out over a rerun. And coincidentally, over like about, I can say about a hundred and something cars, like security. In fact, fill up in this area. I have been shocked. I've really been shocked about it. The rerun election is taking place simultaneously in Kudan, Kaduna South, Chikun Igabi, Kachia Kagaruko and Kajuru local government areas of Kaduna State, Bella Musa, Cross TV News Kaduna. So on the rerun election, voters in Bochi State have expressed satisfaction with the conduct of the State Assembly rerun elections and the 42 polling units by the Independent National Ele Electoral Commission, INEC. They made their feelings known shortly after casting their votes at the Madara Chinadi State Constituency in Katagum local government area of the state. Trust TV's Adam Wima completes the story. The rerun election was organized by the electoral body in order to get a clear winner after the Court of Appeal judgments which affected the state constituencies in three local council areas in Bauchi State. In Bulkachok, Ofar Dakaru and Tudungwada 1, voters turned out in mass to cast their votes. Rahama Aliyu and Saleh Gerba were the early voters who cast their votes and acknowledged that the process is peacefully in the area. The conduct of the rerun exercise is peaceful and we're on the queue now, as you can see. I pray that the one we will vote for will emerge winner and represent us well at the State House of Assembly. 
ki a wannan zabe da ake gudanarwa a wannan rana gaskiya masha Allah ana yin zabe cikin zaman lafiya da kwanciyar We thank God the election is going on without any challenges My hope is for us to get good leaders that can help people from our constituency to become better citizens At polling units in Ningi local government areas the conduct of the rerun election was largely peaceful Adami Imam Trust TV News Bauchi and the Delta State House of Assembly rerun election in the Ethiopia West constituency faced a significant challenge on Saturday as a low turnout of voters characterized various polling units and wards. Jonathan Awayai, who closely monitored the election in the area, noted that residents of Ogara, Mosoga and Jesse communities appeared engaged in their routine activities. Here's this report. Ethiopia West constituency rerun election spanning 37 polling units across five wards witnessed a low turnout, with only a few voters observed at most of the polling booths visited by Trust TV. Residents attributed the low turnout to a lack of sensitization by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEG, and participating political parties. Others pointed to the economic challenges faced by many eligible voters. Wrong, we have to prove our word to tell them that there had never been a magomago in this world before, especially this unit. It will go the way. They, though you see them coming in scantily to come and cast their vote, but you will see we still get the figure because they come and come before the closure of today, today's day. You see it. Appraising the process, residents commended INEC for the early arrival of electoral materials and the functionality of the beavers. They express confidence that the process will be hitch free. It is peaceful because the river is working and the military officers they are, they are doing their job. You can see women, youth, old men sitting down here, they've done their work. For me, it's peaceful. Um, the materials came in time. Everything is going on in there. You can see the picture, the, the letters, the list. Everything is okay. It's for now. The timing. As of the time of filing this report, the elections are yet to conclude. However, contestants have been urged to embrace the spirit of true sportsmanship, emphasizing grace in defeat and magnanimity in victory. Jonathan Awaye, Trust TV News, Asaba. And the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has suspended Saturday's rerun elections in some constituencies and polling units due to disruptions and irregularities. Sam Olumekun, INEC National Commission and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, said this on Saturday amidst the ongoing process in 26 states and 80 local governments across the affected states. He listed the affected states as I, the affected areas as Ikono Ini Federal Constituency in Akwaibom State, where the exercise was halted at polling unit 003 named Village Hall Edemura in Ini Local Government Area and Village Hall Mbiabong Ikotodo Unit 003 in Ikono Local Government Area, where all election materials were carted away by hoodlums. In Enugu State, the exercise was suspended in all eight polling units of Enugu South, one state constituency, where the original result sheets were not available for inspection by voters before the commencement of the polls. Equally, in Kunchi, now Gari local government area, and Tanyawa State constituency of Kano State, polls elections were cancelled in all ten polling units due to invasion, vandalization and disruption by thugs. The cost of living residents of Jalingo in Taraba State have expressed dissatisfaction over the escalating cost of grains, especially maize. The situation, they said, has led to the increase in the cost of poultry feeds and the price of chickens. Now the report. According to residents, the increase in the prices of grains in Jalingo main markets is deliberate to create artificial scarcity. All food items are going up now. Beyond masses. And these reasons of food items, I put it is deliberate. It from the hoarders. They bought a bag of at the cost of ten thousand, twenty thousand. Rice ten thousand, twenty thousand. Two three months, they rose it to fifty thousand. 
every 60,000 per box. So it's beyond common man. You can't afford that. If you go to the market today, the price you will get for a commodity probably will be lesser. By tomorrow, it has increased. I don't know what is happening. All these things, the government are there, our politicians are there. They are not helping matters. So we want the media to tell the government that this is what is happening. People are suffering. People, especially the, 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 the poor masses, we are, we are not finding it easy. Mary Bulls is a food vendor in Jalingo. She stressed that a chicken that cost 4,000 naira last year is now being sold for 6,000 naira. According to her, she can no longer afford to buy the number of chickens needed for her daily business. They should come to our rescue at least, do something about it because it's no longer getting funny. If some can afford, some people cannot afford it. So they should look at the side of those who cannot afford it and do something about it. Stakeholders in the sector said substitute removal and other economic reforms by this government are responsible for the surge in price of grains and livestock. They also said that producers in rural areas are finding it difficult to transport their produce to the state capital. Still, we are doing, we are doing, we are, we are, we are still managing. With this, all these calls, people are coming to buy. At me. Mm, we are calling on them to come to our aid now. There is there is many there is many plans that we used to we are we are putting it on ground so that to see government we are feeling to them several times we are feeling to them we hope that we are they are going to listen to us. We have more than one thousand poultry farm here in Jalingo, but almost seven hundred were closed. Maintaining it becomes impossible because to make it functional you must employ workers. You buy poultry feed. The only poultry farm that are existing now is house poultry farms that contain only 30 to 50 chickens. Nobody in the whole Jalingo that can have 2,000 chickens in his poultry farm. And if there's any, let him come and say it. They have ever called on government to introduce price control mechanism to prevent this usual hike in prices of commodities. And in security, at least four policemen were killed and a cache of ammunition carted away when suspected fighters of the Islamic State of West Africa province, ISWAP, attacked a police station in Nganze local government area of Borno State. ISWAP fighters reportedly stormed the police station at Gajiram town, Nganze local government, and opened fire on the policemen on duty. According to security sources, the invaders set ablaze parts of the station during the incident which happened late on Friday. A top security source said the invaders had left the scene before the military reinforcement arrived. As of filing this report, the police are yet to issue a statement on the incident. Borno has come under multiple attacks from insurgents at different times. And joining us via telephone now is Daily Trust Regional Editor Hamisu Matazu to give us an update on the incident. Welcome to the News Hour, uh, Hamisu. What news do we have so far? Has there been any reaction from the authorities and also from the police command in the state? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for now, uh, we have not uh, gotten any uh, uh, update uh, from the police. Uh, uh, I know the military. Uh, but uh, uh, if we recall very well, uh, last week since that happened in the same garden, the other neighbor, the first is what we just killed about six uh, people, uh, mostly you, uh, playing cards and other local things in uh, an area called uh, the cat joint. Uh, and uh, it happened with a family that to the representative of the constituency, Mohammed uh, and Gadram, and all the more troops be deployed in the area. Uh, unfortunately, uh, another incident happened uh, yesterday. And this time around, uh, in both in the uh, police uh, uh, policemen, 
uh, would be used uh, for this name and uh, the station was heavy. Uh, so uh, uh, that is what uh, we have for now. But uh, I learned that in the previous incident, uh, the commissioner. Hamisu, we can we can barely hear you. But however, if you can hear me. Um, would you say that um, this is an emboldening move by this non-state actors, especially as the government has been quite stern and, you know, has at different, in different forums and occasions mentioned how, you know, its um, attacks or its continuous fight against insecurity and also terrorism has been gaining some form, you know, of, of progress. So would you say this is, in one way or the other, a statement by this non-state actors that perhaps you know, they're still um, as operational as they used to be. Yes, uh, uh, we can say that, uh, sure, because uh, uh, if you remember, uh, I think last two days, I think yesterday, even yesterday, I was uh, going uh, not not the security meeting, which was held here in Borno, uh, the Bruno uh, meeting, and uh, it all it all around uh, the uh, increase uh, in attacks, especially uh, attacks uh, that is taking the nation of IDs that are killing people in this region. And uh, uh, here in Medjugorje, we have the a large number of uh, incidents that claims uh, uh, of lives. So I think uh, by this we can say that there is increase in the number of attacks happening in uh, uh, Borno and uh, the North East. All right, uh, Hamid Sumatazu, thank you so much for the updates. We will definitely touch base with you as more issues develop. Have a good evening. Okay, good evening. You're watching the news on Trust TV. Coming up shortly. Despite fierce competition, Alewa remains the go-to suite in Kaduna. This and of course, many more stories after the break. Stay with us. It was a little bit late uh, coming here. Welcome back to the news on Trust TV. Our look at our top stories again. Vote counting underway. INEX suspends exercise in some constituencies and polling units over irregularities. The escalating cost of grains leave many Nigerians dissatisfied. Moving on now, despite the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria's extension of the deadline to January 31st for the 2024 Hajj pilgrimage, the number of intending, intending pilgrims is yet to reach the allocated 90,000 seats for Nigeria. In the unfolding narrative of the 2024 Hajj, a notable challenge emerges, which is the persistent low turnout even with the extension, as pilgrims from various regions were given extra time to register. The hope was to facilitate a broader participation. However, the turnout remains sluggish, with reports attributing this to the associated cost. In response, Hajj operators are implementing installment payment plans to address the concern. For the intending programs, we should look beyond the worldly games. One, if you consider you paying 4.5 million, imagine, and that is not the final payment, you know, probably uh, shortly after uh, the uh, Saudi, I mean, Saudi authority releases its uh, components of, for the Hajj payment. You see, Hajj authority might say, okay, you, they need to top in some, some certain amount. And good side of it is that for the states, they have this advantage of BT at the end of the day, meaning the old money being paid is not going to uh, go for the Hajj activities alone. Some, uh, they are, they, some, some amount of money will be given back to them. So, but what is there is that I want to appeal if probably the authority, that's the National Hatch of, uh, uh, Commission, can just try to give a, another room, maybe an extension for those who are still trying to catch up so that they too, they will not be left out of these uh, 2024 Hajj uh, rights. Also, the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria, NACAN, 
has updated its first for the 2024 Hajj amidst the instability of the Naira against the US dollar. The chairman of the commission, Jalaj, Jalal Ahmed Arabi, had initially aimed to maintain the 2024 Hajj fare at 4.5 million Naira that was charged as initial deposit. In the updated fares, intending pilgrims from Nigeria's southern region are required to pay 4,899,000. Those from the northern center will pay 4,699,000 for the Hajj exercise, while pilgrims from Yola and Medugri center will pay a fee of 4,679,000 for the 2024 Hajj. While expressing his regret, Arabi stated that since the commission is facing a tight deadline of 25th February, it has limited time to explore further options to remain within the range of 4.5 million Naira, which he had worked for. A statement by Narkin's Assistant Director of Public Affairs, Fatima Sanda Usara, hinted that intending pilgrims are therefore advised to balance their Hajj fare by Monday 12th of February accordingly to enable the Commission transfer the funds before the imminent deadline. Usara assured of Narkin's commitment to ensuring a smooth and successful Hajj pilgrimage for all participants despite the challenges posed by foreign exchange factors. Also, at least 55 persons are said to have been kidnapped by a terrorist gang while escorting a bride home along Damari town in Sabwa local government area of Katsina state. Although security agencies are yet to confirm the incident officially, a resident, however, said on Friday that the incident occurred on Thursday at about 8 p.m. He noted that the three security volunteers have, however, lost their lives in an effort to rescue the victims. According to him, prior to the hoodlums attack, the victims who were on a counter vehicle initially numbered over 70 and were mostly friends of the bride. Sabwa, apart from being an agrarian area, also remains one of the security frontline local government areas grappling with the activities of bandits and other collaborators who are mostly informants. And joining us to give more updates on the situation in Katsina is Trust TV correspondent Abdullah Yamadi. Yamadi, good evening and welcome to the news hour. What news do we have uh, pertaining to updates from the situation? Has the police responded to the incident? Has there been any word from the state government? Uh, hello, good evening. Well, yes. At the moment, uh, this evening, the spokesperson of Katsina State Police Command confirmed the attack. And of course, the abduction of 59 people uh, escorting a bride at uh, Sabwa in Katuna State. Uh, what he did not confirm is the killing of seven people, uh, including uh, four vigilante members uh, during the attack. And uh, residents of the area uh, saying that uh, uh, the abductees have been taken to an unknown destination and uh, of course they have started uh, making calls uh, talking about the uh, terrorists they have started making calls demanding for ransom even though uh, this has not been confirmed and uh, of course uh, like you know uh, Sabwa uh, is one of the uh, frontline local government areas where the activities of bandits has ravaged most of the uh, communities there. Uh, people, especially residents, are even surprised how should that an event take place uh, at night, uh, knowing fully that uh, the area uh, is not safe for uh, such activities. So this is the situation at the moment. All right, Yamadi, would you say that um, this abduction is in one way or another a statement by the non-state actors you say would you describe the abduction of this 55 persons or thereabouts since it's not yet been confirmed uh, would you describe it as a statement by this non-state actors maybe as a reminder to the you know security agencies and residents of these communities that they are still very much on ground well, uh, like I said, the uh, Katuna State Police Command has uh, confirmed the abduction and, of course, the attack. Uh, but yet, uh, some people are saying there is uh, much more that is needed. There's much more that is uh, to be done, at least to secure the area. 
and uh, of course deal with the situation uh, promptly to allow people to uh, go back to their normal activities because like you said uh, Sabwa is one of the agrarian area uh, that uh, greater percentage of the residents are farmers and uh, this time is the time for uh, uh, irrigation activities all over uh, Katuna State. Uh, but of course, of course, like you know, uh, a lot of people are scared. Uh, they cannot go to their farms. Uh, even with the encouragement being given by Katuna State government for farmers to engage in farming activities, at least to bridge uh, the existing gap uh, that was uh, recorded. As you know, during the wet season farming, uh, many people were not uh, able to access their farms. So it is expected that this time around uh, irrigation farming uh, will uh, be done and of course it will bridge the existing gap of uh, food scarcity that we are experiencing at the moment. Well, all right, Yamadi, but then before you go, have, have there been any directive from say the state government because in situations like this we would expect and the state government or the authorities to give out marching orders to the police and other security agencies to go into the forest you know in search of uh, the abductees and also the victims in order to ensure uh, they are released so have there been any such directive from the ranks okay uh, from the state government we have not had anything but uh, the state, uh, rather the Casino State Police Command is saying uh, a lot is being done uh, to train the perpetrators and uh, they are assuring the public uh, Casino residents that uh, the culprits will be apprehended and be brought to book uh, as soon as possible. This is the assurances and reassurances that uh, they keep on uh, telling people or rather giving people here in Casino. Abdullah Yamadi, thank you so much for giving updates on the news hour. We'll definitely touch base to you as more events develop. Okay, thank you. Moving on now, the Bauchi State Commissioner of Police, CP Awal Musa Muhammad, is calling for calm among the residents after an explosion destroyed an electricity high tension transmission line in the Anguan Kanawa area of Bauchi metropolis. According to a statement by the Bauchi State Police Command, Police Public Relations Officer S.B. Ahmed Muhammad Wakil states remnant, rem, remnants of improvised explosive devices were discovered at the scene. Preliminary investigations revealed that a high-tension pole collapsed and was damaged due to explosives used by suspected vandals. The area was cordoned off and swept by operatives. However, Commissioner C.P. Awal Musa Muhammad condemned the act and directed a discreet and full-scale investigation to apprehend the perpetrators. Meanwhile, the Akwaibom State Police Command says it has arrested 22 suspects in connection with the murder of Inspector Usang Igbe for, and for cultism. Police Public Relations Officer S.P. Odiko McDon said in a press release on Saturday in Uyo that the arrest was made between January 31st and February 2nd, 2024, adding that the command would not relent in its fight against criminals. Inspector Usang was allegedly beheaded by over 10 hoodlums on Wednesday night in Uyo at his house around Enen Afaha and Afa Ube, an Uyo suburb. McDon revealed that other murder suspects like Barracks, a serial murderer from Mbiaso village in Urukanam, local government area, who masterminded the Inen clan court war, has also been arrested. And away from that, the rerun poll to fill the Jalingo Euro Zinc Federal Constituency of Yubi witnessed low turnout of voters in most of the polling units visited. Our stakeholders who spoke with Trust TV described the election as peaceful and as security operatives were handy to maintain law and order at the affected polling units. The report. It was a day like no other in the recent past as marketplaces, shops and government offices were all closed with streets deserted. Some residents decried the low turnout of voters and called on others to come out and exercise their franchise since security was guaranteed at the polling units. A supporter of Action Alliance, Aisha from St. Ward, lamented the non-inclusion of her party logo 
on the ballot papers, despite the fact that her party followed all the due processes, including being screened by the electoral body. That come uh, it was very very low and uh, it is unfortunate despite i don't know whether maybe the awareness by the political parties or there is a fault in, uh, in the uh, this uh, national orientation agency he did all the right thing for his name to be there iaa action alliance and again he went to court everything in the court was done according to the court rules he submitted everything on time for them now to print his name, they refuse to print his name. I can say maybe the problem is from the, from the candidates who are aspiring for the positions. Maybe they have not gone deeply into the campaign. I think maybe it's because most of the contestants are related, so some are not fully going out to campaign because of one or two reasons. Some INEC officials and agents of some political parties expressed satisfaction with the exercise but decry the low turnout of voters. So low. We are supposed to have 750 voters here. But as I'm talking to you, now it's past 12 o'clock. That's and it's not even up to 10 percent that have voted. Some political stakeholders thanked INEC for conducting a hitch-free exercise and advised aspirants not to allow politics to become a tool for any form of misunderstanding amongst them. While they also applauded security agencies for a job well done as the exercise was peaceful throughout, others shared contrary views on the exercise which they said did not meet their expectations. I'm happy for the people of uh, uh, the only way for us to do what you ask is for us to ensure that the election is won and part of legacies and policies he intended implementing should also be done by the incoming old member. A court uh, order, we submitted our court order on the uh, on, on 22nd of uh, 22nd of January, sorry and uh, they have not do anything on it they called on the electoral body to be fair in the interest of the citizens the Yobe state police command in collaboration with the nigerian army on saturday intercepted an 18th seater bus said to be conveying political thugs in gashua local government area en route to damatru to obstruct saturday's by election this was contained in a statement signed by the public relations officer of the state DSP Dungus Abdul Karim and made available to newsmen in Damatru. He added that the seven arrested suspects claimed that they were recruited to serve as agents of one of the opposition parties in the state. According to him, the Commissioner of Police, CP Garba Ahmed, reiterated the commitment of the police to and sister security agencies in the state to ensure the security and safety of the electorate and ensure that relative peace is enjoyed in the state. Also, voting was disrupted on Saturday in Akoko North East and Northwest Federal Constituency by election at Unit 5, Ward 13 in Oimo, Ikare Akoko, when suspected political thugs snatched the ballot box. Eyewitness accounts said the attack by the hoodlums caused panic with many voters taken to their heels. An eyewitness who craved anonymity said the attack occurred just before noon after not less than 63 people had cast their votes. He explained that while the hoodlums caused some commotion and security personnel at the polling units were trying to restore peace and order, one of them snatched the ballot box and fled the scene. He added that although the hoodlums made away with the ballot box, the result sheet, beaver's machine and other materials were not taken. The National Commissioner supervising Oshun Ogun and Ondo State, Kunle Ajayi, while commenting on the incident, said the situation was quickly addressed and normalcy restored. And despite the advent of modern production methods, local production of 
Kandi, popularly called Alewa in northern Nigeria, is still thriving with many people earning a living from the business. This report tells the story of how a more than 50-year-old Alewa production point at Tutungwada in Kaduna South local government of Kaduna State has stood the test of time in a technology-driven production era. Trust TV's Bello Musa has more. Alewa is a popular local candy produced in northern Nigeria. Despite the evolution of modern machine-enabled methods of producing goods and services, Alewa makers in Kaduna and other parts of northern Nigeria are still practicing the old way. We put two or three measures of sugar in the water and also measure the amount of water needed. Boiling the sugar is the high point of Alewa production. Before the water boils, we put lemon inside, which is the main ingredient that makes the Alewa. We then spread the liquid on the stone and apply different flavor like ginger, and the rest to give it different colors and taste. We then stripe it on the hook and keep pulling it until the size and the quantity increases. Then we remove it and put it inside a nylon. It stays in the nylon till the next day. Aliyu, who has been making it for the past 40 years, says the current cost of living is threatening their business. When I started the business 40 years ago, we would buy a bag of sugar at the cost of 1,400 naira. But now, we buy a bag of sugar at more than 60,000 naira. Before now, you will see more than 100 workers and buyers here and we used to start work from morning till night, exhausting more than 10 bucks in a day. Aliyu has taught many years how to make alewa and now wants to acquire a more hygienic environment for the production of the local candy called alewa in Hausa, but he lacks support to make it a reality. He is therefore appealing for support to modernize his business. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Let's be watching the news hour on Trust TV. More news after the break. Welcome back. And in business now, the Central Bank of Nigeria has debunked media reports that it plans to convert an estimated $30 billion in depositors' domiciliary accounts to Naira. A newspaper, Not Daily Trust, had on Saturday reported that the federal government had concluded plans to convert foreign exchange in domiciliary accounts in its efforts to provide more foreign exchange and save the Naira from further depreciation. However, the CBN has dismissed the report as fake news on its official X page saying it had no plans to convert the $30 billion domiciliary deposits to Naira. Similarly, the coordinating minister of the economy, Wally Adungs, also said the federal government had no such intention. The minister, who said there is no iota of truth in the report, noted that such falsehood at a time when the government is working to restore economic stability and confidence in the national currency is tantamount to economic sabotage. The way from Nigeria, Israeli occupation forces intensified their attacks last night in the southern Gaza city of Rafah as the fighter jets struck three homes, killing 24 and wounding dozens, the Ministry of Health announced. Rafah is densely populated with displaced people from all around the besieged Gaza Strip. On Friday, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant confirmed that the Israeli army was preparing to move to Rafah. However, Israeli media reported on Saturday that Tel Aviv had 
pledged to Egypt it would not start an operation in Rafah before reducing its population. According to Israeli media, the Israeli government would move the displaced people to Khan Yunis or Deir al Bela and not back to the northern part of Gaza. Israeli reports stated that this was proof the Israeli occupation army had forced residents from the northern part of Gaza to the southern part by a political decision intended to use them as a bargaining chip to end ceasefire talks. And in sports, AFCON 2023 host Cote d'Ivoire at another amazing Africa Cup of Nations escape as Omar Diakite's 122nd minute goal sent 10 man elephants into the semi finals, beating Mali 2 to 1 in the tough encounter. Cote d'Ivoire will battle DR Congo next. Meanwhile, Cape Verde versus South Africa is still goalless. The winner will face Nigeria on Wednesday in the semi finals. And on a lighter note, a British boxer stunned Katsina residents in an organized local boxing locally known as Dumbe in northern Nigeria. Well, Dumbe is a traditional sport which is popular among butchers in Hausa communities of northern Nigeria. Katsina residents were mesmerized by the British national who came all the way from England to display his boxing skills among local boxers. Abdullah Yamadi tells us more about their story. This local boxing competition between Luke Wayland and Shagonyelo Dansuru lasted for about two and a half minutes without a winner. Passion and sportsmanship in the local boxing exhibited by Wayland during the game elicited more than interest of the enthusiastic spectators. <laughs> According to the organizers of the competition, the participation of the British national into the traditional boxing in Kazana was born out of interest and his passion for the Hausa culture. Actually, the performance uh, was it's very interesting because nobody expected that he's going to engage this Hausa man in local Dembe. But uh, surprisingly and very interestingly, even for his performing, he engaged him and at least they beat one another, they beat each other, they engage each other. I see the performance today very fascinating, it's very interesting. Actually, personally, I really enjoyed it, and a lot of people are very interested in the, in the performance. The contests have been very nice. Each of the boxer had tried his best, especially among the indigents. And even the one relating to our indigent, the native here, and the white man, or the English man, they have tried the, the, the best they could. For the white man, uh, he told us even before going to the rim, ring that he was here in order to have a good test of what the boxing is all about. And I think he had a real experience of it. Though the special guest declined to comment on camera, but he said his participation and passion for the traditional boxing in northern Nigeria started long ago and is hopeful that one day he will turn out to be among the best local boxers in the north. Beyond that, the British national said he was overwhelmed by the crowd that turned out to catch a glimpse of his encounter with Shagonyelo Dansuru calling on residents and the organizers as well as the custodians of this long-aged tradition to continue to promote Dembe because of its social and economic potentialities. Abdullahi Izuma Yamadi, Trust Television News, Kazina. And that wraps up the news hour on Trust TV. Do want to follow us across all of our social platforms and also catch Trust TV across our YouTube platform for more news programs and documentaries. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Have a good night.